Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Everdell. This is specifically the Collector's Edition, and it was sent to me by Starling Games, and is designed by James A. Wilson. Take the slipcover off, and here you go. There's that nice, pretty cover, Everdell. From Everfrost to Bell Song, many a year have come and gone, but the time has come for new territories to be settled and new cities established. You will be the leader of a group of critters intent on just such a task. There are buildings to construct, lively characters to meet, events to host. It will be a busy year. Will the sun shine brightest on your city before the winter moon rises? Prepare to be enchanted by the wondrous world of Everdell. Once you are here, you might never, ever want to leave. Let me show you how to play. So in Everdell, the first thing you're going to notice after setting up is this gorgeous 3D tree. Look at that. Isn't that fancy? But not just that. Look at the components. Look at all the art on the cards. What a gorgeous package. Um, but anyway, the main point of the game is to get the most points throughout the seasons. And if you have the most points at the end, you are the winner. Each player starts with two little worker tokens. Uh, and you also get a handful of cards. Uh, depending on who's first, the first player gets five cards, next player gets six cards, and so on. And how the game is played, and, uh, it, and how the game is played is on your turn, you will take turns performing one of the following actions. These actions may be performed in any order, but only one action may be taken per turn. You can either place a worker, or play a card, or prepare for season. Your workers are necessary for the expansion and success of your city. You'll deploy them to various locations. Uh, in Everdell in order to gather resources, draw more cards, host events, or maybe even, even embark on a journey. There are two types of locations. This one here has a closed ring, as you can see. That's an exclusive location, meaning only one worker can go here. But a shared location with an unclosed ring, that means multiple workers can go there. So even if somebody's here, I could put a worker here and do the action on that space. So a lot of these actions up here involve like getting resources, like you can pick up three twigs or you can pick up two resin or you can pick up a pebble, you can pick up berries. Um, some of them let you draw cards in addition to uh, picking up resources. Now when you place a worker down, that worker stays there until you bring them back with the prepare for season action. There are also more powerful forest locations. Uh, in a two or three player game, you can only put one worker on these spaces. But if you look uh, for a four player game, two different workers can go on this space. Like this gives you three cards and a pebble. However, you cannot place two of your own workers on a single forest location. Also, these are randomly determined at the beginning of the game. There's a deck of these you can, um, to make each game different. Here's an interesting one. You can discard up three cards and gain one of any resource for each card. Even the cards that you play in front of you, which I'll get into later, can have locations on them. Like this one, the inn, if you place a worker on this card, you can play a critter or construction from the meadow for three uh, fewer resources, meaning from the uh, card bank here. What's also interesting is that uh, if the location has an open sign on it, then other players can actually put their workers on your card. Even though it belongs to you, uh, you get a point uh, if other players use your card with a worker. The Haven location is a shared space. You may discard any number of cards from your hand, and then for every two cards you discard, you gain a resource. You can also place your workers on events in order to claim them. Uh, for example, the Harvest Festival event here needs you to have four of these types of cards in play. As you can see, each card has a different symbol on them, and so if you manage to build four of those leaf uh, locations first and place a worker there, then you claim that uh, event for the season. There are also special events, and these are randomly determined at the start of the game. Uh, these, if you manage to build the, t the two cards that are listed on the card, in, in this case the Doctor and the Postal Pigeon, uh, you can pl put a worker here and claim this event, uh, and you'll get a reward at the end of the game. Like this one, the Flying Doctor Service, you'll get three points for each husband-wife pair in every city, because there are husband and wife cards in the deck. Um, if you build the Peddler and General Store cards, you get the Under New Management event, which when achieved, you may place up to uh, three resources on here, and the certain whatever resources you put on here give you a certain number of points. Monk and Dungeon cards, uh, whoever builds those first, um, gets the Ministering to Miscreants reward, which is three points for each prisoner in your dungeon. Uh, if you build the Shopkeeper and Post Office and claim this event, the Brilliant Marketing Plan award gives you uh, when achieved, you get you may give opponents up to a total of three resources each, but for each donation, you gain uh, two points. 
Now this will make a little more sense when I get into the playing cards aspect of the game, but basically as you play cards and build them, you can claim events and uh, get points for doing so. The basic events each give you three points, and those all give you points depending on the descriptions of the cards. And finally, here is the journey area. In autumn, uh, which is the last season of the game, uh, you can discard cards equal to points, uh, and you can claim spots on this journey track. The five, four, and three point spaces are exclusive because they're closed, whereas this one with the two points is uh, open space or a shared location. And you may send more than one worker on a journey. So that's all the action spaces you can place your workers on, but let's get into the real meat of the game, which is playing cards. On your turn, instead of placing a worker, you may instead play a card. You may play one card on your turn, and to do so, you must pay the listed requirements into the general supply. You can either play cards from your hand or from the general supply in the meadow. As you play cards, you'll place them in front of you to form your city. Uh, so for example, for the wife card here, I could, uh, there's two requirements. I could play two berries if I had two berries. I could return them to the supply and then play the wife card in front of me. There are two types of cards in the game. You have critters like the barge toad here, uh, which you gain two uh, twigs for each farm in your city when you play that. Uh, or a construction, like the general store, which lets you gain one berry. If you have a farm in your city, you gain one additional berry. These cards are common cards, as you can see by the description, and you can have multiples of these in your city. But if it's a unique card, like this courthouse, the unique construction, you can only have one of these in your city total. This card here lets you, you gain one twig or one resin or one uh, stone after you play a construction. That's a permanent bonus. I'll go into the, the, the meaning of the different symbols in here, but that's a pretty nice card. A unique critter like the king uh, is a, this guy's a purple prosperity card, which gives you bonus points at the end of the game. You would get, this guy rewards you for each event you achieve. One point for each basic event and two for each special event. He's also just worth four points at the end. Now, I mentioned to play the wife, you would have to pay two berries, but another way you can play cards is if you have this location built already. So let's pretend I had this farm already in my city. And here you can actually see in the bottom right corner, it tells you uh, what uh, critter you could play for free if you have this location, a husband or a wife. So if I have the farm card in play, then on my turn, I could play the wife card for free without paying for it. However, if you do that, you place one of these occupied tokens over this. That way you know you spent this free uh, critter action here, and you can't do it again for that card. Now, your city has a maximum of 15 spaces to play cards into, and each card takes up a space. Uh, the recommended layout is probably like three rows with five cards each, uh, but you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. And then event cards don't count against this 15 card limit. Now let's go into the different types of symbols in the game. Uh, these are the card types. Here's the Tan Traveler symbol. What this means is you activate this once immediately when played and it never activates again. It's just a one-time bonus. So the ruins here, you could discard a construction from your city and gain resources equal to that construction's cost and draw two cards. Instant bonus, but then it doesn't trigger anymore. The farm, like I mentioned, has, a, has the green production symbol. This activates immediately when it's played. You would gain a berry. And during the prepare for season actions, it gets to trigger again in spring and autumn. I'll go into that a little bit later. Red destination cards, like I mentioned earlier, are an actual location you can visit, like the monastery here. The monastery, uh, you can give two uh, resources to an opponent and gain four points. And this actually notes the worker that goes here stays here permanently. Now, this, now note that this card lacks the open sign, meaning only your workers can go here. But if you put a worker here, uh, you can do this action. Uh, and if you have the monk in play, you could use this space as well. Blue governance cards give you a bonus when you uh, after you play certain types of cards. So if I have the historian in play and play uh, critters or constructions, I get to draw a card every time. And then purple prosperity cards, like I mentioned earlier, are uh, end bonus cards. So this ever tree here would give you one point for each purple card in your city. Now, one important rule of the game is there is a strict hand limit of eight cards. You can never have more than eight cards in your hand. If you get to draw cards, you can only draw up to eight. If you have to give cards to an opponent, you must choose an opponent who has room in their hand. Whenever a meadow card is played, you immediately replace it with a card from the draw pile. 
If an ability lets all players draw cards from the meadow, draw them first, then replenish them. And if the deck ever runs out, you just uh, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. So that's how you play cards. You pay the costs, and to get those resources, you do the actions. Uh, and as you play them in your city, you'll get more and more bonuses. But now let's go into preparing for season. That's the third action you could do on your turn instead of placing a worker or playing a card. Let's say you've placed all of your workers and you can't and you can't play a card or don't want to. Then you have to prepare for the next season because each turn you have to do an action. On your turn, then you would bring back all your deployed workers from the board. Then, if we look at the top of the Ever Tree here, you gain the bonus listed for the season. So for spring, you would get one of your workers, and all of your uh, green uh, cards would trigger, like the farm. You would get the bonuses on all of those cards. After you do that, your turn is done until it's your next turn. Thematically, the game begins in late winter and ends as the next winter approaches. So autumn is the last season of the game. So you'll notice in uh, summer, you would get one of your workers and you could draw two meadow cards. And then for autumn, you get two of your workers and again, all your green cards trigger. What's also important to note is that you don't have to perform the prepare for season action at the same time. If you are ready for spring and you've played all your shit and uh, put down all your workers, you can just do it. Doesn't matter if anyone else has done it yet. You go in this game at your own pace. Now, once you have reached the end of autumn and cannot perform any more actions, or you wish not to, you have finished the game and you must pass. If you pass, you cannot be given any cards or resources for the rest of the game. All unfinished players continue playing until everyone has passed. Then you add up all your points to determine the winner. You count up any points on the cards in your city, as well as any point tokens you received during the game. Also, make sure you add up your purple prosperity card bonuses, uh, journey points, uh, and events. If there's a tie, whoever achieved the most events wins. If there's still a tie, whoever has the most leftover resources wins. Now, before I go into specifically what the collector's edition provides, I just wanna show you some other cards in the game, some examples. Uh, here's the Undertaker. Uh, this is a one-time bonus. You can discard three cards from the meadow, replenish, then draw one card from the meadow. Uh, it also unlocks a second cemetery, uh, if you have the cemetery card. The chapel lets you place one point on this chapel, uh, and then they draw two cards for each point on this chapel. And it's a location card, or a, uh, action space card. The wife may share a space with a husband and it's three points if paired with a husband at the end of the game. The storehouse, uh, this is a a recurring seasonal uh, bonus card. You can place either uh, three twigs, two resin, one stone, or two berries on this storehouse from the supply. Uh, and if you put a worker here, you can take all the resources on this card. Uh, so this lets you kind of store stuff for later. Uh, and here's one of those recurring bonuses, the shopkeeper card, you gain one berry after you play a critter, which is very useful. Now let's go into what the collector's edition uh, adds. First off, you get an extra set of pieces. These are the rat workers, which are pretty fun. I think I usually pick these guys when I play. You also get these really nice metal point tokens. They're pretty gorgeous. Uh, in comparison, the regular tokens are just kind of like cardboard cutouts, uh, but these ones are very pretty. Likewise, instead of these uh, little cardboard occupied tokens, you get these wooden tokens uh, with a sticker on them, uh, which are just a little bit nicer. You also get an eight-sided die. This is used in the solo version of the game. And finally, you get extra cards like the legendary expansion. These are very powerful cards that you can choose to give out at the beginning of the game if you want an extra twist on the game like the green acorn uh it's a location you can play critter construction for four fewer uh resources which is pretty nice um you also get the extra extra cards uh these can be shuffled into the deck at the beginning like the carnival uh draw one card for each other green card in your city or gain one resource for every two other green cards in your city um, there's also finally three uh, Rugwort cards. These are just kind of like mean, nasty cards like Rugwort the Robber. Uh, you can swap hands with your opponent if you play this card, which is uh, pretty annoying. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. You place workers down to do actions, collect resources, then you use those resources to build cards in your city, and then you try to get bonuses and events and uh, get the most points at the end of the game. And that's pretty much it. So first off, if it isn't obvious already, the production on this game is absolutely gorgeous. 
uh, even without the fancy stuff from the collector's edition. Like, I, although I will say, I love the metal tokens. Uh, I love the the cards that they add to the game. But really, the actual base game itself doesn't need this much production value. You don't need a 3D tree, but it's awesome. Like I, I absolutely 100% support. Uh, the ridiculousness of the production value for this. It just makes the overall game so nice. The art on the cards is beautiful. Having different components for like the berries and resin uh, instead of just like the you know boring cubes like so many other games have. It's great. The tree is ridiculous but it's cool. I love it. All the attention to the detail with the components and the tree and the cards really does put you in that forest setting. Uh, and also the tree is a handy reference because on the tree itself, you can see all the four events. You can see what happens during each season. Uh, you can see what you specifically what you receive each season. Uh, it's a pretty nice uh, reference and also it's handy to keep track of where people are at season wise. If you look and go, okay, they're in summer, so I'm in spring. So that you can just easily look without having to uh, fiddle with looking at other, other people's cities or whatever the hell. What I like is the game is super easy to learn. It's just one action per turn. Place a worker, play a card, or go to the next season. The locations are clearly marked with what you do on them, uh, with a text to explain. If there's anything that's not immediately clear, there's always text on the board or on the cards to explain what locations do. Everything is elegantly designed and marked on the board, which I cannot say for most board games. A lot of board games, it's like, shit, what? okay, look up in the manual what you have to do, but this game, it's always very clear. The card play is really satisfying. I love being able to play cards for free if you have certain constructions. It's got kind of like a sort of Seven Wonders feel where you're checking to see, ooh, did I build the, uh, the, the farm? Ooh, okay, I can place this down and not have to worry about paying for resources. There's lots of satisfying powers and actions and effects, along with very interesting synergy of cards. Uh, it makes choosing your cards to play really important, especially because you only have 15 cards in your city uh, as a limit. The eight card hand limit rule is really interesting because it can make giving cards to opponents almost like a detriment because it clogs their hand up with junk that they, don't, that they don't want. I don't think a lot of games do this. Usually, if you have to give a card to an opponent, it sucks. But in this one, it's kind of fun to mess up with their what they're trying to do uh, with their hand. Um, it's also cool that you can proceed in the game faster if you're going faster than other players. You don't have to stick to the pace of other, other players. If you're ready to go to summer, just go to summer. I love that. I haven't really seen that in a worker placement game before. Usually you're all just kind of doing the same rounds and so on. But if you're ready to go, just go. I like that idea a lot. So it's little things like that that make this game stand out to me. Not only does the game look magnificent, but the game underneath it is solid and it's simple enough to teach, but it has those fun little twists to impress me. Uh, if you like building a tableau in a game, I highly recommend this one because not only is it easy to play, uh, the design is pretty clever, and it's just gorgeous to look at. Like, I really do think that the production value in this game uh, is worth it. Um, so, if you like the aesthetic, and like how it looks, and like this type of game, it's an easy choice. Uh, my wife loves this game, and uh, I gotta say, I always have a good time playing it. Highly recommended.